uh, expectations would be the one thing that kind of holds you accountable, I guess, or or something that people in life want you to do, right? It's almost like like a, a compass, right? Expectations are are things that or that are steps to a goal that we want to achieve, or um, or a goal that others want us to achieve. It's so, so it's it's a driving compass. Expectations kind of drive us to achieve goals. So they're definitely important, but sometimes we have a negative connotation to it sometimes just because it's expecting something to come out of us, right? To do something, right? So our expectations, you know, are they um, other things that we believe should happen? Are they things that we believe must happen? Are they beliefs that we've adopted from other people in the world, like our family or friends? about how the future in our life should be. Mm. Is that what an expectation is? Yeah, that's a pretty interesting way to to think about it. Like, would you say that it is a driving force to how we achieve goals and how we live out our life? Yeah, so a driving force, right? So a driving force that makes us do something throughout our, throughout our lives that motivates us, I guess. That's actually falling very close to a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think expectations could certainly lead to self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think maybe expectations are- Can you explain that a little bit? Just Yeah, so self-fulfilling prophecy is like, um, we have a belief about the world and a belief about how the future is going to go for us. And that influences our thoughts. And our thoughts naturally influence our emotions and our behaviors that we project outward into the world. And naturally, you know, when you're projecting behaviors and emotions out into the world, other people around you in the world are going to, pick up on that and then they're going to treat you the way that you're treating them so self and prophecy yeah. if you believe you're sad if you believe that your future is hopeless you're going to act like your future is hopeless and it could be the tiniest things i if you want a, a promotion at work and you don't believe you're going to get a promotion at work you avoid eye contact you're passive in your approach your body language mm-hmm. is all saying i'm not going to get this raise your speech your vocal tone your volume of your speech it all communicates to your boss that you don't feel very confident that you're going to get a raise. And so you don't get the raise. So self-filling prophecy comes true. How that ties into yeah. expectations. So expectations, that person expected that they were not going to get a raise. But another example, they expected they're going to fail a test. They expected that the, their romantic relationship is going to end, that it's not mm-hmm. going well. And then either of those people in those situations project that outward because their expectations that those things will happen through the self-fulfilling prophecy end up coming true because of the, the way they act because they believe it's going to happen. I also think expectations can hold you back from accomplishing or from motivating yourself from accomplishing certain things. You know, we find ourselves doing nowadays with social media being so, you know, relevant in our current society is that sometimes we see so many, for example, young people, uh, achieving so many great things in their life, right? You know, we see musicians, we see entrepreneurs who made millions of dollars and, you know, they created this app and, you know, happened to, you know, make a lot of money by selling it to big companies. And so we hear all these stories and then we realize to ourselves, like, man, like, what am I achieving in, in my life? Like, I'm, I'm not doing anything yet then compared to that person. Right. But it's it's realizing like, okay, well, am I expecting myself to be exactly like that person? You know, and so that's that's where we can kind of be a little bit self-aware of like, okay, realizing what thoughts come into one's head, because I think to some degree that can bring people to to feel overwhelmed at times when they say like, hey, I'm not achieving as much as this person in my in my life. But right. why compare, right? That's it, where, you know, or yeah. do you want to hold yourself to those standards or those expectations? You know, if we're listening to the, to the wrong people and just doing maybe what other people say that we should do, then, you know, that could either go in, in good ways or, or bad ways, you know, depending who you're listening to. That sort of thing where we're going with now is very personal to me, at least maybe not clinically, but like the depression that I was feeling for from freshman year to sophomore year at my undergrad, I finally figured it out. Um, and it was through, yeah, sure. It was through the help of some YouTube videos and self-help YouTube and 
information in psychology and just studying it on my own, but I figured out a solution to that depression. And I found out it was my expectations about what should happen in my life that were making me depressed. Mm. It was the yeah. expectation that I should be engaged to a fiance right now, like by now, yeah. right? Like I should already be on my way to marriage and having children because I'm in college. Yes. And by the time all these other people graduated college and they always, the Val Victorian speech and graduation, they always say, Oh yeah, I met my wife in college and this stuff. Or I hear about my friends getting married or from high school, or all this mm. stuff. And, and it puts a lot of, and I think society even puts that a little bit, maybe not so much anymore, but because now marriage is becoming, I guess, less popular now, but at least for me, it's still really important in my life. And so I have the societal pressure and expectations in my mind. And certainly, yeah, some of that comes from me growing up, you know, in the Catholic church and, and growing up with my parents. And, and I believe, it's not like I don't believe in it. I like, I believe in it. I think marriage is a, at least for me personally, it's something that I look forward to and want for me. Now other people would might want short-term relationships or maybe just a long-term relationship. I never, you know, they never go through the deed of marriage for whatever reason. And that's fine, you know, but for me, I had that high expectation that I should have a fiance by the time I'm graduating college. Right. And I think when you put such high expectations on yourself and those expectations don't get fulfilled, it leads to disappointment. It it inevitably leads to disappointment because you can never predict the future. You can never know for sure. But once I let that go, that's how I overcame that on my own. I don't have to believe that I have to be married by the time I graduate college. It's okay to mm-hmm. let that go. It's okay to let go of yeah. that pressure. And I think it's natural almost to to almost compare oneself to others, right? And so sometimes we create, you know, expectations that, oh, by the time that I'm 25, like you're saying, I need to have this amazing right. car or have made a million dollars, you know, but, you know, but why? I think that's the question. Yeah, you ask but yourself why. why. And then that's why, you, why do you need that? Why? It's like you, you who, who told you that? It's like you snap. You know, it's almost like when you become self-aware is that like.